Welcome into Mock Trial Masterclass, your guide to controlling the courtroom. I'm Luke, and I want you to be a Mock Trial Master. Let's talk about how you can make that happen. So here's the thing about direct examinations when you're a lawyer. They can be kind of boring. Direct examination is the time for the witness to be the star of the show, which means as a lawyer, you're taking the back seat. And for the most part, you're really just asking questions like, what happened next, and why, and what made you do that? And that being the case, it can be really difficult to stand out as a lawyer. I know that whenever I judge and score mock trial competitions, it can be really hard for me to pick a score for a lawyer on direct examination because there tends to be so little that they do aside from asking those very simple questions. And so what I like to coach, what I like to teach, is that in every direct examination, you need to give yourself as a lawyer an opportunity to stand out beyond asking those very simple questions. Now, we don't want to overtake the witness. Again, the witness still needs to be the star of the show in direct examination. But there are some things you can do as a lawyer to take back maybe a little bit of the spotlight to stand out and get a good score. That's what we're going to go over in this video. I'm going to share with you my three favorite ways to stand out as an attorney during direct examination. Now, let me warn you about these three things. They don't apply to every situation. For example, one of the tricks I'm going to give you only applies to expert directs. So don't go into your next direct thinking that you need to apply all three of these. These are just ideas, but they're some of my favorite and they work if you use them correctly. The first thing you can add to your direct examination to try to stand out more as a lawyer is to lay an objection trap. This is probably my favorite of these three techniques we're going to talk about because I love objections. Here's what it means to lay an objection trap. Ask a question to a witness that you know is nine times out of ten going to get an objection. For example, you might want to ask a witness a question like, what did she say? What objection are we going to get from that? Probably hearsay. There are lots of ways you can lay an objection trap and ask that kind of question, but basically what we're trying to do is to bait the other side into an objection. And here's the great thing. You don't always have to be right, and you don't always have to get the thing or the statement or whatever we're dealing with into evidence for this to work. Here's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to give you as the attorney an opportunity to argue objections. Because arguing objections, especially to a scorer, is much more exciting and shows a lot more command and confidence than simply sitting there and saying why and what happened next, which again is so much of what you do during direct examination as an attorney. So lay an objection trap and think about it before the tournament so that you can go in confident, prepared, and completely ready to respond to the objection. Something else you can add to your direct examination to stand out more as an attorney is you can use the courtroom as a measuring tool. This is one of my very favorite things to do. I learned this very early in my high school mock trial career and took it all the way into college and pretty much everything I've done ever since then. In fact, one time I was on a buy buster team in college and completely off the cuff decided to use this technique and everyone afterwards was like, wow, that was so incredible. And I'm like, it's really not that hard and you're about to be able to do it too. So here's what I mean by using the courtroom as a measuring tool. Almost every case packet has some kind of distance measurement in it. You know, he was 15 away, feet away from me when he shot at me. Uh, they, they were 10 feet away when I saw them fall to the ground, right? Statements like that. But when you're in a case where you've got a statement of distance like that, use the courtroom as a measuring tool. How do you do that? Here's what you do. Ask the witness the question that's going to get the answer about the distance. You know, you might ask, about how far was Mr. Smith when you say he shot at you? Or how far was Mrs. Smith when she fell down? And when the witness answers, when they say 10 feet, 15 feet, here's what you can do. You look at the witness and you say, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Witness, I'm gonna start backing up from you. And then you literally start backing up from them and, and you tell them, when I get to the point in this courtroom, even if I have to go into the gallery, where I am about as far from you right now is Mr. Or Mrs. Smith was when they fell down, when they shot at you, whatever. 
I want you to stop me and let me know. And then you start backing up, you start going into the, the gallery of the courtroom if you have to, and eventually your witness, if you planned it well in advance, will say, okay, stop, that's about how far it was. And so you stand there, you look around, you look at the jury and you say, so, so Mr. Witness, this is about how far uh, you, you think 10 feet was. This is about how far Mr. Ms. Smith was when whatever thing happened. I think this is so much fun to do. One of the reasons is because it doesn't happen a whole lot. But another reason is because it gives you complete command and complete control of the courtroom. I always say that controlling the courtroom is the most important part of mock trial. And so whatever you can do to do that better, go for it. Before we get into my third tip for standing out on direct examination as an attorney, I want to remind you that you can schedule coaching with me. I'd be happy to meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, with you and a teammate one-on-two, -on -two, or you and your entire team one-on however many that is. You can make that happen by clicking the link to schedule an appointment either in the description on YouTube or in the show notes if you're listening on a podcast platform. And what exactly will we do in this coaching appointment, this coaching visit? Well, anything you want to do. I can listen to a speech or an examination and give you instant feedback. I can lead a workshop on an area of mock trial that you'd like to learn more about and get better at. Really, whatever it is you want to do, however you want to spend the time, I am here for you. So go click that link in the description. Go schedule an appointment. My third tip for standing out as an attorney on direct examination, I teased this one earlier. I said one of our tips was going to deal specifically with experts. This is it. Have an expert come off of the witness stand. Now, in some tournaments, this isn't always possible. For example, I know in high school nationals, you're not allowed to use enlargements of exhibits. So oftentimes, an expert coming off of the stand would look a little ridiculous if they're only hand holding a copy paper exhibit. But in almost every other tournament, certainly in college, where you're allowed to enlarge exhibits, get out an easel, uh, in college, you can even make a demonstrative aid if you'd like. Get your expert off the stand. Number one, it's gonna help their score because it's gonna give them an opportunity to stand in front of the jury, teach them, and get some really, really valuable face time. But it's gonna help you as well because when scores go to score, they're gonna remember your direct a whole lot more than again, if you had just stood there with your arms to your side and asked, well, what happened next and why did you do that? Right again, we're going for ways to stand out and look a little bit different than the average attorney on direct examination. And if you bring your witness off the stand, your expert witness off the stand to interact with an exhibit or an enlargement or, or a demonstrative aid that you and your team has made, it's going to be memorable and it's going to make you stand out. Now, how do you do this? Well, it's really, really simple. Once you have your easel or enlargement or whatever it is set up, you simply ask the judge, you say, may Dr. Whoever or Mr. or Mrs. Whoever please join me in the well of the court. And every time they will say yes. It's that simple and it can really help you stand out and make your score go up. These are just three of the ways that you can stand out as an attorney on direct examination. There are plenty of other techniques and methods you can implement to do the same thing. But these are my favorite because number one, I've used all three of these. Number two, they work practically every time. And number three, if you apply them in the right situations, I promise it will make your score skyrocket. Mock trial masters don't just stand with their hands to their side and ask why and what happened next on direct examination. They do something to elevate their own performance, take just a little bit of the spotlight away from the witness, not all of it, not most of it, just a little bit, and they stand out more than their competition. And I know that if you implement these techniques, that's exactly what you're gonna do.